The first step in building the rear axle assembly was to iron the end of the reach where it attaches to the front axle, and also where the reach hounds, which are on both sides of the reach, attach to the reach itself. Now the top and bottom plates on this reach are half inch thick by five inches wide, and the side irons are half inch thick by four inches wide. These have to be fitted to match the curves and the angles of both the reach and the reach hound joints. The reach itself is four inches thick, but it tapers to two inches at the end where the kingpin and where it also attaches to the front axle. So where this is tapered, we take this half by five iron and shape it to the, the curve of the reach, and then we heated it up kind of hot set it onto the reach. This burns off the high spots and allows us to file off that and it gets a, a good honest fit when we go ahead and get ready to bolt these two together. Now this is the complete set of irons, the top and bottom plate, the side irons, and also the end cap that goes around the end of the reach. This is half inch thick by two inches wide and it gives strength to the king pin that will go through this end. We haven't drilled it through the wood yet, but we will when all the iron is assembled. This is bolted to reinforce the stress that is on that reach end, both in front and in the rear of where the king pin will be. Now these irons for the side are shaped for the curve of the reach and they're also shaped where the reach hounds need to come and attach to the reach itself. So we're going to pin these in place in the front of the reach, but we're actually going to start to assemble them at the back of the reach. So we're going to clamp these irons in place with them pinned and then we're going to shove the reach back and, in, and by doing so we're bringing the reach hounds into the iron where they need to be finally assembled. So we can bolt or we can clamp these in place and then we'll take and start the assembly from the back by drilling the back holes Then we'll take it apart and actually attach these side irons to the reach hounds first and then work forward. Once they're in place we can go ahead and assemble the front of these side irons to the reach and all these take half inch bolts throughout. Now we can put the top and bottom plate and you can see where the king pin hole will be and we're going to line all these up make sure they're in the right position we'll go ahead and clamp and drill and bolt these and when they are all bolted in position then we'll we'll actually take and drill the inch and a half hole for the king pin We have the inch and a half hole drilled in the metal and that is already in the correct position so that becomes our kind of a guide or pilot when we do put the kingpin hole in. So this is just drilling and assembling the half inch bolts that are necessary to hold the top and bottom plate. And while the majority of this assembly takes half inch bolts, there are some three quarter inch bolts that go through both reach hounds and the reach. So here we're going to put these through and they have nuts on both sides. And this will uh, keep the reach hounds in their proper place. And then there's a half inch or a quarter inch plate, excuse me, that goes on top with half inch bolts. So this completes the assembly of the front half of the rear axle. Now when we put the axle on the back side of the reach and the reach hounds, there are irons that we have machined saddles into that will actually uh, have the 
the axle sit on. The horn and bumper will go on the back of the reach. And then we have axle clips that will clap, clamp over the axle cap and keep everything in place. So Calvin here is adjusting the saddles on the reach hounds. And when he does so, we're going to take and triangulate the axle to make sure that it is square and runs properly when it is in use. The horn and bumper goes in the center on the reach and these axle clips are assembled over the axle cap through each reach hound, through the reach and the horn and bumper and then everything is bolted securely with 7 8 bolts. So here we have the back side of the rear axle assembly. And while we have this axle cap on, now is a good time when we took and made sure all the hubs are going to clear the axle caps. The last thing to do is to assemble the brakes. There's uh, three sets of irons. This iron goes over the center, over the reach, which is a type of a mortise and tenon that is shown here on an old one. And then on the left side, this is an iron that's an inch thick, three inches wide, and has a little saddle in it. And this holds the bar that's two and three quarter inch thick and holds it in place. So this is where we took the inch by three iron, heated it up in the forge. We made a little form to go into the press. And this is uh, made of the two and three quarter inch size bar that the brake handle itself is made of and we're going to press this in to make the saddle that will receive the brake handle. So this was the first step but we actually needed to go back and do it again because this was a gradual bend. So now we're going to put it back in. We'll put the top piece in place, put the pressure of the press in place, and then Calvin has a sledgehammer and I have a sledgehammer, and then we simultaneously hit from both ends and upset this, see it moving into the round piece that will actually be the brake uh, rod itself. So this is just upsetting it back on itself so it has a tight fit onto the brake bar. Now we needed to break, make the brake handle itself. And this was made out of inch and a half thick by three inch wide steel. Now where the brake handle attaches to the two and three quarter inch brake bar was fine but this needed to be tapered down to an inch thick on the end and so working in the forge we can only heat about six or eight inches at a time so this is piece by piece by piece tapering it out until we finally have our brake handle now the bar which actually activates the brake beam itself is welded on to a two and three quarter inch we have it turned so that it will receive into the brake handle and then we stick it in the forge and weld it into place. And this is just the last final steps where we are cleaning it up and uh, it's kind of stress relieving it also. So when this is all done we have our complete brake iron assembly. One on the right actually is a brace for the axle cap itself. The one on the left is the one with the saddle and it goes through the axle cap and the one in the middle that had the mortise and tenon type joint is in the center over the reach also goes through the axle cap and will be bolted to the reach and then on the right side there is just a one inch square bar that is also through the reach and bolted to the reach hound on the right side. These all have 7 eighths 
rods drawn out on the ends which are threaded and we made seven eighths nuts for these which we tightened into place. The brake handle itself ended up being 110 pounds and it sets in the saddle through the hole in the center iron with a top cap to keep it in place and this is how the brake handle works itself. So once this is all in place, we can take our half inch bolts and bolt them to the reach hounds and to the reach. And this secures all the brake bar irons where they need to be. So this completes the rear axle assembly. Here we have the front irons also show the back irons with the axle clips, all the brake handle irons which which hold the brake but also stabilize the rear axle cap and of course we do both of them the same. So we appreciate you watching. This is where we put some oil on them and how it will attach to the front axle. Thank you again.